and, and it catapulted you to start a business. I'm talking to somebody that may have lost their home and it calls it, 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 and you were homeless, but it calls you to uh, um, move into another state or another area. However, whatever the situation is, you 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 the life it took something to you, and you didn't allow yourself to become overcome by it. Amen. It catapulted you into this new thing. And then there are some of you that may be in this situation and it's coming and you don't know what to do. I decree and declare unto you, if you would fall on your face and begin to cry out to Jehovah and just worship and pray, not asking. I guarantee you in between you worshiping and praying and seeking him and all his righteousness, all the things that you needed shall be granted unto you. Okay, I want to talk to you. Um, I want to talk to you. Well, you know what? I'm going to do as the Lord says. I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you the book of Luke. We're just going to go right to it, and um, uh, we're going to go Luke 22, and. Um, we're gonna go Luke 22, and I'm gonna I'm gonna start at verse one. Um, now the feast of the unleavened bread drew near, which is called Passover, and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then Satan entered Judas. This is very key. Satan entered Judas, surnamed Ezekite who was numbered among the twelve. So he went his way and conferred with the chief priests and the captains how he might betray him to them. And they were glad and agreed to give him money. So he promised and sought opportunity to betray him to them in the absence of the multitude. Now, it's very key right here there are people, amen, that are part of your group. There are people that are in your circle. See, guess what? If ain't nobody close to you, can't nobody, anybody ain't close to you, can't do nothing to you. It's very hard in certain situations for people that ain't close to you to really get to you. But when people are in your circle, or in your surroundings, this is normally where the betrayal things come in, in most cases. Amen? So we notice that Judas was here, was one of the twelve, and he went to uh, engage with individuals, the, the, the high priests and the captains, about betraying uh, Yeshua. All right? In verse 7. And then came the day of the unleavened bread, when Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and be prepared the Passover for us, that we may eat. So they said to him, Where do you want us to prepare? And he said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man will meet you, carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house which he enters. Then you shall say to the master of the house, The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large furnished upper room there make ready so they went and found it just as he had said to them and prepared Passover and real quick you know it's very important that we pay attention to Jehovah's instruction Jehovah's about to speak to some of you in your situations I'm talking to I'm talking to somebody and I know that you're 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 in agreement with this you're in a situation you're in a circumstance and you need some answers, amen, you need some direction, and Yehovah is going to give you directions, now it's very important that you follow these directions exactly, you know, it's it, one of the worst things that you can do is get directions from God, and start talking about it to your buddy or to your girlfriend, you, you, you know, that information was given to you from, from Yehovah to you, and it's personal, and you must follow it out exactly, and you will find out that whatever he tells you is going to work out exactly like he, like he said. In verse 14, when the hour had come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat 
this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper saying, This is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of my betrayer is with me on the table. Mm. And truly the son of man goes and it has been determined. But woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to question among themselves which of them it was who would do this thing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now there was also a dispute among them and to which of them should be considered the greatest. And he said to them, the king of the Gentiles exercised lordship over them and those who exercise authority over them are called benefactors, but not so among you. On the contrary, he who is the greatest among you, let him be as the younger and who governs as he who serves. For who is greater, he who sits at the table or he who serves? It is not he who sits at the table. Yet I am among you as one who serves. But you are those who are continued with me in the table, and I bestow upon you a kingdom, just as my father bestowed one upon me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on the thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan had asked, for you that he may sift you as we but I pray for you that your faith should not fail and when you have returned to me strengthen your brother but he said to him Lord I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death then he said I tell you Peter the rooster shall not crow this day before you will deny three times that you know me and he said to them when I sent you without money bags knapsacks and sandals did you lack anything so they said nothing then he said to them but now he who has money bags let him take it and likewise knapsacks and he who has no sword let him sell his garments and buy one. For I say to you that this which is written must still be accomplished in me. And he was numbered with the transgressions for the things concerning me have an end. So they said, Lord, look, here are two swords. And he said to them, it is enough. And I'm going to go down to verse 47. And while he was still speaking, behold, a multitude, and he who was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near to Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When those around him saw what was going on to happen, he said to him, Lord, shall we strike him with a sword? And one of them struck the servant 
of the high priest and cut off his ear. But Jesus answered and said, Permit even this. And he touched his ear and healed him. What I want to talk to you very briefly about is celebrating your Judas. Uh, you got to get to a point in your life and in your walk before the Lord that you begin to celebrate when those people are talking about you. Amen. When they're selling you out to people, you know, with their chattering and lying and betraying you and, 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 and calling you all kinds of names. Amen. Those that are, those that are, um, they, 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 they got it out for you. Amen. Uh, and, and they'll do anything for a dollar. Amen. To discredit you. Amen. You got to celebrate your Judas. You, let me tell you, you want to celebrate that person. You want to celebrate the situation because it's this thing. Amen. It catapults you into your greater power. If you will, let me tell you something. If it wasn't for the betrayal of Judas, amen. If Judas didn't betray Jesus, there's no redemption. Amen. So there's some agony and there's some pain and things that we got to go through as believers. Amen. As people, as men and women of Jehovah, that you're going to have to go through some things. Amen. And the purpose of these things is so that you get power over it. Amen. Every time you die to something, amen, you gain victory. Every time that thing becomes dead. When you face that thing head on, amen, knowing that you are part of the Trinity, amen. You're part of the kingdom of Jehovah, amen, if you will. I mean, you know, what I'm talking about is Jehovah is in me, but I'm in him. So I'm in a space called Jehovah. I'm in a space called God, amen, no doubt, you know. And I know that he has all power. It's been given unto him in heaven and earth. Amen. He got to the point where, oh, death, where is thy sting? Amen. See, so even in the fear of death, we don't have no fear. Why? Because the Lord is with me. My rod, my staff, they comfort me. Thou hast prepared the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Goodness and mercy, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I just want you to know that you're in a space called God amen and you can celebrate that thing amen I don't care what it is if it's your past amen it seems like it comes up right at a certain time all the time amen and you have not been able to deal with it it makes you kind of nervous and jittery because you know you're, you're afraid of the outcome but I'm just telling you right now it's just like Yeshua in the Garden of Gethsemane. You know, listen, if it was possible, Father, you know, uh, uh, why hast thou forsaken me? Could you allow this bitter cup to pass me by? Ah, but nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. What is man? Let me tell you something. You can't be in the perfect will of God, and you can't do the things of God, not unless you consider giving up your will. And hey, listen, in order for God to be the often finisher of your faith, in order for God to move in you and through you guess what you have to let him have full control and amen so guess what when you give him full control you're not going to be fearful of what they're going to say you're not going to be fearful of the things that they do because you're going to know God is in control what is he in control of he's in control of your soul everything amen you've given everything over to him you've given over your will you've given over your mind your thoughts amen where you go and how you go amen your relationships amen everything is ordered by him your steps are ordered by the Lord. Won't you say amen? Listen, let me tell you something. You might as well go ahead and praise him. I'm almost finished. I'm telling you, I'm talking about your steps being ordered. I'm talking about all power. I'm talking about if it were possible, amen, that you would be changed from mortality to immortality and be like he is. Amen. We're moving towards that. Amen. And it's a glorious thing. But right now where you are, if you would consider, if you would just consider with me, letting go and giving him total control. Amen. Giving him total control. Let the will of Jehovah be done in your life. Hallelujah. No matter what they do, it can't harm you. Amen. Listen, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Hallelujah. So guess what? Though they slay me, yet will I trust him. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. You can make it from here. You can make it from here. Jehovah, Jehovah is with you. You can make it from here without no fear. Listen, ain't no need of you fearing nothing because guess what? He's the author and finisher of your faith. Everything but 
belongs to him. Everything was created for him and by him. Amen. All good and perfect things come from above. So I don't care where you are and I don't care what they're doing. Let me tell you something. Instead of getting mad and wanting to retaliate, let me tell you something. Start